Hey folks, my name is Dave. This here is Honcho, our 1978 Jeep J10 Desert Race Truck, and welcome to our shop here at NTD Racing, where today we're continuing our build of our second desert race truck named Honcho 2. Lefty is one of the front runners that somebody recommended, and I really like it. So anyway, if you got more recommendations of what we should name our next truck, please leave it in the comments below. So let me talk briefly about what my channel is all about. I like to show just normal guys that you can build really cool stuff like desert race trucks on a budget as long as you're willing to do the work yourself. So I'm going to show you over the course of building my next truck how I use the Langmere Systems Crossfire Pro Fusion 360 to build parts like suspension and also how I use the programs from Bentec and an angle grinder to make roll cages for trucks like this. Sometimes my videos are really easy to make and the content just kind of comes out and sometimes I got to do a lot of research to make the videos. Uh, say, for example, when I did the tap up, tap down shifting for the 6L90 transmission. And if you go to that video, you can see in the description, I've made it a one stop shopping where either you can listen to the video and see what I did or go to the resources that I use to do the same thing and maybe do that on your own rig. And I will start a playlist now for every time I do that. For example, today when I'm working on the L96 engine, I will put all of the resources in the description below that I went to to find information like the pinouts for different plugs and that kind of stuff that might be able to help you if you're doing the same thing. So before we get to that, two pieces of business. First, I'll ask that you'll like and subscribe, leaving a comment or ringing the bell for notification of future episodes if you like this video. And then in a couple weeks, we will be in Las Vegas racing Honcho at the Min 400. And what's really cool there is we'll be part of something called the Military Challenge, where we will be trying to raise awareness and money for our partners, Folds of Honor. And we're doing pretty good so far, but we could still use your help. If you would consider donating, there is a link in the description below where you can go to ntdracing.com, click on donate, and then partner with us to help some really deserving families. But more on that later. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that computer working with the engine, try to pluck that engine out of that mangled Chevy Silverado, and then I'll show you how I plan on making it a standalone harness. Let's get to it. All right, we got the truck up on the lift. Now realize I've taken the rear axle off and some other parts off the vehicle, wheels, tires, and all that. And so the weight is shifting around a bit. Anytime you're using a lift, and the things that I'm thinking of while I am using my lift, and I am by no means a safety guy here, but just realize that the center of gravity of this thing has been changing a bit. So I will usually use like a kickstand or wherever I think it's getting heavier and sometimes on both the front and the back and that seems to help stabilize, it, especially these two post lifts. Going underneath the, uh, the car here, before I get this thing started, one of the things I wanna do is since I remove the cooler off the front, if I start this thing, oil's gonna start shooting out the front of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this oil cooler lines right here and put a bypass in there. Let's get to that before we start the car. So the bypass that we're using today is by the Z-Whip. Um, this is what it looks like. Basically, it makes it so the oil comes out one passage. It just goes right out the other. They give you a little O-ring. I just oil that thing down a little bit and press it down inside that, that uh, O-ring um, location there. And then two fasteners, which will uh, go on the back. Okay, I'm feeling kind of lucky with this computer. First off, to get the old plugs off the old computer, these all the back parts are broken. These are usually the clips that kind of clamp it and suck it down into the computer. They're all broken, so it took a little bit of prying to get these plugs off. But if you look at the back of the computer, of the new one, and you compare it to the old one, they're all the same data, all the same numbers in this Alpha Bravo Hotel 2. I don't know, I'm just thinking that Considering all the information is the same, I'm always lucky. I got a feeling this is a computer from one of the exact same trucks. And I bet you that program that's in there is gonna run this engine no problem as soon as I get the vats out. Okay, we got the new computer in. Let's go ahead and turn on the key and see what we get from the new computer. And it looks like there's more stuff coming up. It's not starting, however. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up our HP tuner to the OBD2 port underneath the, uh, the dash. Just hook it up just like you would any other scanner in there. And then let's go over to our software over here. We're using the just the normal old HP tuner. I've had this one 
for a bunch of years. I think there are newer versions now, but this one works just fine. And all the software is the same. You just got to keep updating the software. Let's go ahead and get into the software first. And first, we're going to try to download everything that's on the computer, the new one that we just got. And then we'll see if we can take the VATS out, upload it again, and then start the car. All right, if you're new to HP tuners, this is one of those tools like chainsaws, welders, and backhoes. As soon as you get one, you wonder how you ever live life without one. So what I'm doing here first off is I just downloaded the whole program off of the new ECM that I just got and also just pulled the, the computer program for the TCM. And I save that as a file that I won't lose and I won't change. I'm gonna keep that one the way it is. So as I make changes, I can always go back to the old program and start over again. From there, I go to that OS tab and I select, I go over to the VATS and I turn off the vehicle anti-theft system. There's two things there that I turn off. And once those things are off, now I want to go back and write it. So I go to that down arrow with a little computer chip and I say, okay, I want to write to the ECM. Here's a trick though, is it, this is how HP Tuners makes their money. Once you want to write back to a computer, you actually got to buy some credits. In this case, it was two credits, they're like $50 each, so $100 to write to this thing. Once I'm ready to write, here's one of the tricks for VATS, is you have to write entire, at least to the ECM. I don't think you do it for the TCM, but just because I'm here, I, I'm gonna write to the TCM as well. And realize that's gonna take about you know, 15 minutes. I have it like at 5,000 times speed here uh, as you're watching it, but it's gonna take a little bit of time and I don't touch the computer, I don't touch the car or anything, I just let it run. Make sure your, your computer doesn't go into standby mode. And then once the program's in there, let's go ahead and see now if we can start the car without the vehicle anti-theft system. All right, I've tried a couple times to start the engine and it just wouldn't crank and I couldn't figure out why. I've already removed the vehicle anti-theft system from the computer and you saw me do that on the HP tuner. So it should have started or at least tried to start. It would crank over. But what I found out from reading on the forums for HP tuner is that if you're not getting obviously a signal from the crank position sensor or the cam position sensor, then you're not, it's just not going to send a spark signal or probably gonna start the fuel. And that's what's happening. Uh, and what I saw is when I went underneath the engine, the wire that goes to my cam position sensor was cut when <laughs> the power steering box, which used to be all the way over here, came all the way over here and crushed the computer and cut that wire. So I need to take that out. Well, here's the thing though, is it is going to be almost impossible to get in here and work. And I actually can't even pull the power steering box in there because it's just kind of wedged up in there. So it's time to pull the engine out. I'm going to pull the engine out. We're going to go to making it a standalone harness. Um, and then we'll try to get it started from there. It'll be a lot easier to work on the engine when it's on my test stand. So let's go ahead and start pulling the engine. All right, well, pulling this engine was a little bit more of a trick than most of the engines I have pulled before. Uh, and what I do is I go in there and I've got to disconnect a bunch of things. I actually take the exhaust manifolds off. So you can see me in there trying to reach in and get those exhaust manifolds bolts off. And this engine's a little bit canned off to the right and into the firewall. So some of those are tricky to get. Uh, and then I also I take the bolts off that hold the yeah, the coil packs, the, those brackets, and I move those. And then I have some special plates that I put on there. Uh, and this is, this is something that I use. I, I'm guessing some guys just reach in there and just grab the exhaust manifolds and just lift off by that. I'm not sure how they do it, but that's how I do it. And then as I go to start lifting this thing out of the truck, I realize is that that whole steering box is everything is up into the truck. I can't come pretty much straight out like I normally would. So I literally have to get in there with my Sawzall and start cutting engine mounts out to get this thing to uh, release itself anyway, but it finally got it out. This was my favorite part of the whole thing was taking this thing to the metal recycling place. Uh, I ended up getting about 2,800 pounds of metal off this thing is what I recycle. And they gave me like 150 bucks. I think it's like five cents per pound. But this is really kind of, I don't know, kind of funny is I bring this thing in there and the guy comes out to help me and uh, maybe not, we're not speaking the, the same language at the same time, I don't know. And, uh, but he's like, I'm gonna get the forklift, you you know, you know, get out of the way, I'm like, great. Uh, they've used a grappling hook before, but this time they're using a forklift. And realize the door of this car still works perfectly and the window also <laughs> works perfectly, but 
I'm not going to tell this guy because this is going to get kind of interesting. And plus, you know, I did like to see some destruction just like anyone else. So I let him just blast through the side of this thing. I thought it was awesome. Uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't sure if this forklift would be able to lift it without kind of falling into the trailer, but uh, he did just fine. He seemed to let, I think he's done this before. So, so anyway, I thought it was pretty cool watching. Sometimes my, my little boy and I will go to this metal place and we're, when I'm dropping off metal and we'll just sit on the back of my truck and just watch these guys lift stuff and throw stuff around and tear car parts up. But, yeah, that's just fun stuff to do. All right, now that we have the engine out of the truck, it, you can kind of get a better look at all the stuff I had to do to pull the engine out. I've taken a couple of these out and put them back in. And, and I find that the LS engine, especially with the way the accessories are on the front, it's kind of a difficult engine to grab and pluck out um, without breaking some stuff. I still broke some stuff, but let me show you what I use for a hoist system. First of all, uh, I cut some of these parts off on my plasma table, you know, just to to make these things but you could obviously make these with a grinder and just a drill to make this spreader bar and then these chains go down to this plate again i made it on the langmuir systems crossfire xr um, and this just bolts in there's three when you take the exhaust manifolds off there's three holes here where you can put bolts in and i find that to be a nice balanced spot in the middle there to lift the engine now when you lift it just like this it's going to pull it up at about a 30 degree angle which I tend to use a lot as I you know, shoehorn these things into my race trucks. But if you don't wanna do that, you can just run a strap down. You kinda of saw me doing that in the, uh, the video. Let's go ahead and take these off. Let's dress the wires down a little bit so we can kinda of see what we're looking at. And then I'll show you some of the things that you gotta to do to make one of these engines stand alone. All right, let's go ahead and walk around and take a big picture look. We'll look at some of the damage and some of the wiring and the plan for putting this thing back together. First off, some of the damage. Uh, this happened when I pulled the engine out. This is a knock sensor down here on the LS engines. And it just, it was impossible to pull this thing out. And what I should have done is unbolt that thing and pulled it straight out. Cause I did unplug it. Cause I didn't want to rip the, uh, the plug off, but had I just unbolted it and taken it out, I probably wouldn't rip that thing off. Broke one of the, uh, the spark plugs, destroyed that. When I, took when I had those engine mounts on the side to pull this engine out I actually had to uh, unbolt the um, all of the coils there off the other side besides that there's not much other damage I showed you this in the last video the power steering pumps completely destroyed um, and then also as you look down here I've kind of sort of unraveling the wires this goes to your cam sensor and this is the part that was broken off and I'll be going over to Honcho to get the wires off that because this is the L96 engine and it is almost identical to the LY6 engine that is in Honcho except for a few things this thing takes the flex fuel and I guess the main difference is just the injectors are a little bit different besides that this is the same engine that's in Honcho right now all right so enough for the damage let's talk about how we're getting this thing started the first time and it's electric motor we got we got to deal with the electrical so besides fixing that plug we got to feed some power to the engine. I always save these big heavy duty uh, wires here and I'll reuse these things. I'll put new terminal ends and those kinds of things, crimp those things on. So I always keep those and I won't use this end, but I will, that wire, I don't know, saves you about 20 or 30 bucks as opposed to having to go buy another new one. Coming around to the computer, and this is going to be where the big question marks are going to be. I got to see if I can find a pin out for this L96 engine. So first off, I think most of these wires are doing their job. I will have to look for new Canon plugs to replace these and maybe just go pin by pin and replace the, uh, put the wires in the new plugs. If somebody's got a good link for where to replace the Canon plugs for this E76, uh, 78 um, ECM, that would be that would be awesome. Anyway, I'll have to replace those. But I think right now the engine should start the way that it sits. 
And then you got these two plugs over here. This is all, well, besides some grounds and some big power lines, this is really all that disconnects the engine from the, the entire chassis of the, uh, the vehicle. So this is what goes underneath that big fuse blocks that was, that was on the driver's side. You unplug this and then you unplug this cannon plug and the engine besides, like I said, some grounds is ready to come out of the car. Um, and then as far as the game plan goes for wiring this thing up, I need to find again a pin out for this. And if somebody's got that, that'd be awesome. But in general, if the wire is pink or red, you cut it off and provide it power and it should provide power to everything on the car. Now, big picture how these engines work, in case you haven't worked on one of these before, is it's there's constant power. So one of these pink wires right here goes up this loom and goes directly over to either say the coil pack or it goes over to each one of the injectors or something like that. And then the computer sends a ground signal down and the ground signal is what either fires the um, coil off or fires off the injector or whatever the thing is, the computer is generally sending a ground signal and then all these positives. So you just provide constant power uh, with you know the ignition to one of these wires and you should be able to get this engine to work. But we'll go ahead and there's gonna be some fumbling around as we, we try to make this thing work the first time. I don't anticipate it's gonna start on the first go around. Now I've done LS1s, I've done the LY6, and I'm just gonna assume the wires are pretty darn close. But the problem is, is this computer, I've never done one of these computers. This is an E78. The other computer I had was an E38, which I hear is a better computer, but I don't want to just switch right away and give up. This is one of the errors I made is I disconnected this from the truck and I just junked the truck and I should have cut the other side of the cannon plug off with all those wires because in here, what I think is probably in here is all of the wires for the fly-by wire uh, throttle or the wire throttle and then also the um, the stuff for the obd2 so i'm gonna have to figure out all those colors of wire so i'll have to maybe chase some back and get a pin out from this thing to figure out what wires go where and that's what we're going to get started on right now see if we can't get this thing wired up turned on and then fired up let's let's get to it Well, I was so happy that that engine got started and I was going to take this opportunity to rewire that throttle cable to get that thing working. I do a lot of work with electrical stuff. So if you're interested in what kind of solder I use, solder iron, maybe the heat shrink, I keep all of my favorite tools on my Amazon store. You can find a link in the description below or you can go to ntdracing.com and find a link there. Let me give you a quick walk around of what I do. And you saw I just got the engine started, so now I feel comfortable about talking about it. But what I do to get an LS engine running standalone for the first time outside of the vehicle. First off, I do have my HP tuner uh, working over here. Um, and I have this thing usually plugged in. It's not plugged in right now, but that's what I'm using to either flash the vats out and I showed you how to do that. And then also, you know, reading stuff when I start the engine. And one of the most important things is I have it, I bring it up and I want to be able to read that I have oil pressure as soon as I start the engine. And that was, that was working today. Uh, besides that, let's take a look at just generally the engine and what you might think of, holy buckets, that thing is just totally crude. You got wires going everywhere. And that's right. And that's because I don't want to spend too much time 
bundling wires or doing you know even soldering some wires together until I know I got everything in the right place and it's working so here's an example of just how crude that is is here is the purple wire that goes all the way back to the starter you I put it right into this connector right here which is a 12 volt source and it starts to send the, the engine off and then even more crude than that here are my CAN bus wires that go right into my OBD2 sensor and you can see they're just <laughs> twisted together but it worked all right continuing around you see these cam position sensor wires i did rewire those those are exactly the same ones that are on honcho as far as color goes and I get, i'm guessing that sensor is the exact same one also from the uh, ly6 so between the l96 and the ly6 pretty much the same engine except for injectors and then the other thing here was the crank position sensor There's something going on with it i'm not sure what it was i happened to change two things at once one is i put the vin in I really don't think that made a difference in the ECU, but I had to drop the starter off and then clean the wires with some electrical connection cleaner and put it back on. And then I was, the problem was before I wasn't getting a, a uh, RPM signal on the HP tuner and I, I'm getting that now. So that is working. And as soon as I started getting an RPM signal, then the spark plug started to fire. And once that happened, I knew I was ready to, uh, to fire this thing up. So, uh, so we got that so all that stuff together like i said is once i held it together i had a spark signal once i got all the wires kind of put together uh, also and that was good the final part of this thing whole thing is fuel and how do i deliver fuel to the system well what i use is these injector cleaner kits and here is a part of it i'll put a link for it in my amazon store you'll find a link for that in the description below but here's a fuel injector kit and so basically what i do is i run from my compressor over here I just basically dial it to 60 PSI and it sends 60 PSI down the line into here. This thing I fill up with just maybe a little bit of fuel, just enough to kind of get the job done for the day. It puts 60 PSI in here, 60 PSI goes all the way down directly to the fuel rail. And that is what, you know, 58 PSI, 60 PSI is what the LS engines need to run. There's no fuel pressure regulator. There's no fuel return line, just that 60 PSI going uh, right there. And then once that's all ready to go, Basically, I take my little uh, starter wire. This goes all the way back to the starter. I put it in here where there's a 12 volt hot inside there and it fires the engine right off. And that's how I uh, will test an engine for the first time, standalone on a test stand. You can see my test stand right here. I mean, it's pretty crude. The engines just don't move around that much uh, when they're on the test stand. You obviously want to make sure that it is secure, but this is the one that I've been using for you know a couple of years now. To, uh, to roll the engines around with the transmission on the back. Well, there you go. Hopefully you'll find that of value when you try to make your own standalone uh, engine. Be careful out there. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher. Like I said, I'm trying to make this a one-stop shop location for you to go to find all the information you need in case you're doing the same thing on your own L96 engine. So if you check the description below, you should find links for all the places that I go to find out information if I'm making just in general an LS engine standalone. So hopefully that will be a good resource for you. I'm going to hit you up one more time. If you like what you saw here today, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button below leaving a comment or ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. Also, we got that military challenge going on. Go to ntdracing.com, click on that donate button. And uh, if it's $5, $10, whatever you can spare, it is definitely going to a good cause and we sure appreciate it. A lot of great content coming up here in the future as we're getting Honcho 2 on the next video. I'm getting the body all assembled and put together and we're gonna start dimensioning out how the tires are gonna go under there and get ready to put all that information into our Bentec software so that we'll be ready to make the roll cage for Honcho. You won't wanna miss that content over the next couple of months. I can't wait to see you next week. Take care of yourself.